So on the on the court, what would that look like if you're on the court? I, I mean, in life, out in the world, someone's coming to you with and presenting with that kind of a, a situation. What what are your well, recommendations? Uh, I've been a practicing physician for almost three decades, and the people that I've seen almost universally, if there's any significant chronic degenerative illness, it, it is it is very very rare where there's not some very serious significant preceding emotional trauma. The worse it is, typically the younger of age, typically before the subconscious. For, uh, forms or this conscious mind forms is about six years of age and there's some very powerful emotional treatments that can be useful. There's a whole discipline called energy psychology. Uh, one of the most popular treatments is emotional freedom technique or EFT and MTT and dozens of others. Uh, Bruce Lipton has a number. There's just dozens of different approaches. And EAV machines like equipment that can deal at the, the physics because medicine is focused in chemistry, you know, and, 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 the, and the structure and the mechanical components and, and to get this, but really it is physics. I was going to actually, I was one of, the, one of the speakers at A4M in December, but I decided to bail on I was going to talk about physics, the, the importance of physics, because physics is 21st century medicine, and the energy and biophotons and optimizing that, in addition to some of these mechanical uh, improvements we're learning, it's a, it's a tremendous energy, but I, I really think if, if, you're, if you're missing the physics, you're really missing a big component. Thank you. Um, we have a question from Joe Sugarman. Well, it's not really a question, but I, I just wanted to make a comment, and that is, I have this philosophy that uh, that if you have a problem, within that problem is an enormous opportunity that will dwarf the problem. And I think right here we have a problem. And the problem is, uh, how do you identify an anti-aging uh, uh, physician, correct? Well, I think the answer, or the, the, the opportunity, uh, lies in creating either a website or some sort of vehicle, similar to Joe uh, Mercola's uh, uh, website, where people can go and get the kind of a question and answer thing, where people can go and, and, and uh, not only uh, find out the answers to their questions, but also find a doctor, have a, a, a directory. And uh, so I think that's where the opportunity is. Uh, just, just a comment. Good comment. Phil Miller, you're looking for a mic. Let me make a few comments. Um, you know, in a really popular vein, um, probably even more directed toward the audience, I think Suzanne Summers has done a tremendous amount to increase the awareness and the accessibility of those of us in anti-aging medicine. I know I personally have benefited a huge amount just because she's a lightning rod. And she gets out there, she con creates controversy, then you ask the questions. What am I looking for? What are the qualifications? Who's out there? And she's become like one of a number of resources. Sure, we can have one website a collection of websites, they're all out there. Information is out there. Could it be better? Yes, it could be better organized. But the information, we're, we're suffering from information overload. Can we actually process this information? But let me get back real quickly to what you had asked, Greta. Um, you know, let me give you an example of a, a number of patients that come to see me. I have a number of professionals in the Silicon Valley, doctors, lawyers, uh, dentists, um, and these guys are in their maybe late 40s, in their early 50s, and you know, they're all professionals, but you know, on the weekend, they're weekend warriors. So they're playing hockey, they're playing basketball, and these guys play hard because they're competitive. And what's happening is you know, in their early 50s and the mid 50s, they start breaking down. They start be developing shoulder injuries, elbow injuries, knee injuries, back injuries. And so, what they do is they come to me, we set out a complete program, usually it involves some testosterone, sometimes it involves growth hormone, and what it is is a complete approach to health and wellness and repair, preventing breakdown. What happens? They can go back out, they're not as afraid to compete again, they're more active, relieves their stress, and we all know that exercise is one of the key components of health and longevity. So anything that I can do, uh, both in terms of helping them with their routines and giving them some hormonal support, improves that quality of life. I, I totally agree. Uh, I, pres I did a talk once upon, the bi as biomechanical aging is the first portion of aging that's gonna hit you the hardest and age you the first. A, a bad knee, a bad back, bad neck, you can't move, you're screwed. So, being coming from a sports medicine point of view, 
you've got to have a biomechanically efficient body to maintain that body. And twist one ankle and you've already aged maybe, if you, if you have a knee replacement or a hip replacement or hips are bad, well, you're, you've aged. I mean, you're, there's no question. Um, so therefore, preserving the biomechanical efficiency to me is a, really a highlight of anti-aging. And in, in that regard, I, in terms of training that weaken warrior syndrome, what, what is, I see the most is overtraining and not enough undertraining. And there's a whole philosophy and way of undertraining, which is a whole other area of discussion. Most people that I see are not making, they say, doctor, I go to the gym five times a week, I do it two hours or whatever, I'm not making any gains. What's wrong with me? Well, they're undertrained. That's a fabulous point. Um, we see a lot of people, we talk about exercise, we talk about nutrition, we talk about the benefits of it, and every day in our practices we face people who come in who do exactly what Carla said, who are obese. Now they may not be body weight obese, but they're organ fat obese. Uh, there are numerous terms for this, uh, skinny fat, thin obese, whatever. And these are people who are neglecting to do the correct kinds of exercise. They're exercising in a fashion that's been propagated since the 1970s. Again, wrong century technology. And there's been huge advances made in exercise uh, physiology as it applies to aging as well. So I think that's a brilliant point. Thank you for bringing that one up. Uh, the other thing I just want to add, uh, the whole question of finding an anti-aging doctor, I think it's a lot more believable when the anti-aging doctor walks the walk. And that means you can't smoke, you can't drink, and you can't be obese if you're going to tell people not to do those things. Now, they don't have to be like Bill Andrews and run hundreds of miles through the <laughs> desert in a Tyvek suit. But uh, there is an aspect of functionality which Carlos brought up beautifully. Uh, this is what people come to see me for in a nutshell, is to remain functional. Now, for some people, functionality is walking around the block with their grandkids or walking their, their red poodle or something. But the functionality is defined by the patient, and we as physicians have to try, do our best. I'll give you a quick example. When I first started uh, ultra running, I went to three different uh, foot doctors and two different, different orthopedics, and every single one of them said, why do you run? Quit. Okay, so that of course was the exact opposite of what I did. But the bottom line is, is that's not what patients want to hear. They don't want to hear quit. They don't want to hear uh, just take drugs. They want to hear functional ways to preserve their own functionalities, things they can do simply and easily. And, and there'll come a day when we can freeze people. Well, uh, the day is here, obviously, but there, where we can do it to a lot more people is what I mean, where that becomes sort of, you know, you drive through cryogenics, maybe, I don't know. But, but right now, what I get is, how do I stay physically active? How do I stay involved in my life, both emotionally and physically? And um, you'd be surprised about the questions we get on the internet. Joe's point about Facebook was brilliant because I've had people ask me those questions. It's scary how much. Now, I don't know if they know what they're asking me, but they're asking. So, Just, just one, one quick comment, too, uh, about the point of the injuries. There was an article published a few weeks ago I posted on my site where uh, if you have some type of debilitating injury structurally, not necessarily even a surgical intervention, you are and it really limits you from participating in life, you are functionally 30 years older. 30 years older. And I, I actually had an injury earlier this year that pre prevented me from exercising the first time in a long time. And it was absolutely true. So, I mean, and the, the point here to make is that you don't want to run to the surgeon. You want to find some natural alternative a process. And, and there, you know, there's lots of levels of chiropractic, very innovative chiropractors, not stri uh, strictly structural, that can actually perform these miracles and really get you back in the, into, into shape. So that, that's a key point. Um, thank you, Joe. That's great. Um, I've made a mistake when I said, what I meant to say, not under training, uh, they're under recovered. Un people, the people, the best athletes in the world know how to re recover faster and uh, not know, but they have the genetics to do that. We also have the genetics of who's going to be what kind of athlete you're going to be. There's, the genome of Sports capacity has been laid out pretty well, and it will be laid out further. But um, no question uh, what, what Joe said, that um, one small injury can upset the apple cart. And if you, what I do in my practice at least, I, I entail the use of rolfers, hello workers. These people have been to physical therapists. Physical therapists say, okay, you've got a shoulder problem, and that's it. They treat the shoulder. However, that shoulder has affected their back, has affected their gait, or even like an ankle injury produces a, a back pain, hip pain, knee pain. So you treat only that one area, it's not successful. Therefore, 
when the Rolfer Heller worker looks at you, a total sort of encapsulated myofascial sheath and rearranges things back to where they should be, there's a greater chance of a better outcome.